the next thing that we're going to add to the game is going to be the sound effects. Um, so in the first video, in the first in one of the first few videos, we imported them. So we have something called bullet.wave, hit.wave, and then hit game sound.wave. Um, so if you don't have those already in your folder, just be sure to add them. I'll have a link in the description for where you can actually get these resources. And then at the very top of the program, we're just going to initialize them. So we'll say bullet sound um, equals, and we'll say pygame.mixer.sound. And it's going to be bullet.wave. We also have, oops. We also have hit sound. And that's going to equal pygame dot mixer dot sound and we're gonna so I actually have two because when I was making it I used the original hit sound and then I didn't really like it so I switched it over so we're actually just gonna go with the hit game sound dot wave and I guess we can just ignore the hit sound for now um, the hit sounds kinda loud so I I just set the volume like a little bit lower so you can say hit sound dot set volume and it's gonna take a decimal value or a float, you can set it to like 0.2, that would be like 20% of the actual volume, or the original volume. Um, so yeah, now all we have to do is just kind of decide when we want to play certain sounds. I guess we could rename Bullet, I mean it, it was called Bullet whenever I downloaded it. We're going to just be using it for whenever it hits a brick. So we can just call this like brick hit sound. And then this one will just be like um, we can call it like bounce, yeah, bounce sound. And so we'll call bounce whenever the ball bounces off the side or off the paddle, and then whenever a brick breaks is whenever we'll call the brick hit sound. What's wrong with that bounce? Nope, we just need an N right there. All right. So if we scroll down here, we check for the collision. So we have these three if statements. This one checks if it hits off the right, this one checks if it hits off the left, and this one checks if it hits off the top. And we can just say we want to do a bounce sound dot play for each of them, right? So we'll just kind of drop that in each of those if statements. And then up here is whenever we check to see if it hits the paddle, we can do the same thing, bounce sound dot play. And then inside of this is whenever it checks to see if it hits a paddle or if it hits a brick. So what we'll do is we'll just um, add a line that says brick hit sound dot play. That's basically all there is to it. So now when we run this and the ball hits the paddle or the side, it makes that sound, and then if it hits the brick, it makes kind of like a little sound effect as well. So you can obviously download other sound effects and just change up the initialization of it. But that's all there is to adding sound effects. Now as far as adding a feature to where some of the bricks are going to have a ball and some of them aren't, we need to actually go up to the init function for the brick and kind of give it some randomization because we don't want all of them to have balls otherwise it'll kind of fill up too fast but maybe like let's say 25% of them are going to drop a ball and the other ones won't so the way we're going to do that is inside of the init function we're just going to get a random integer We're going to say self dot pregnant equals true. Else self dot pregnant equals false. So, as you can assume, self dot pregnant means that it's carrying a ball. And if it's true, that means it's going to drop one whenever it's hit. And if it's false, it will not. So, that is looking good. Um, yeah, that should be fine. And so now, since we're going to have multiple balls, instead of 
just having this one ball initialized down here, we're going to kind of do something similar to what we did with the bricks, where we're going to actually say uh, balls equals an empty list. And actually, we can just add the ball that we already made in there, so we'll start off with one already. So that should be fine. And then the way this is going to work is kind of everywhere we have, like, we we've called ball, we actually need to be calling a for loop of all the balls in the list so that all of the functionalities will still work. So here, instead of saying ball.move, what we're actually going to do is we're going to say, we can just kind of tab that over and then say for ball in balls, ball.move, and that's going to move all the balls that are in the list. Um, if we scroll down, get here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to tab all of this over and we're going to say, for ball in balls, and now it's going to do that for all of them. Same with um, these three if statements. So actually, we can just put those in that for loop as well. So we can just tab those over. So now it's going to do it for every single ball on the list. And then here for brick and bricks, uh, we just need to add another line. So we'll tab this over, and then we'll say for ball and balls so that's going to be checking collisions between every single ball and every single brick it's probably not the most efficient way of doing it but it's the simplest so that's the approach we're going to use and then we can just cut this piece of code right here and add it to that whoops we'll add it to this for loop for all the balls so it's going to check well actually no because we don't want it to to say it's game over if only one of the balls in the list are outside the range. So the way we're actually going to determine if the game is over is we're going to go to right here. So we're not really in anything except for the while, right? Just in the if statement for if it's not game over. And what we're going to do is we're going to check the length of the list of balls. So we're going to say if the length of balls is equal to zero, we're going to set game over to true. Yeah, so we'll do if brick dot pregnant then we're going to do balls dot append so now we're going to be adding a new ball to the list um, ball and we're going to give it the x value that that brick was at so we'll do brick dot x and then the same and the y value is going to be the same thing brick dot y the width and the height are also are going to be 20 just like before and then the color will still just be white so 255 255 255 and then it's going to take that brick out the ball that hit it is going to change the velocity and yeah that should be good so let's run it and see what happens so now it's hitting the bricks like normal. It's just doing its thing. So far, none of them have dropped anything yet, but let's just hit a couple more and see what happens. Okay, so the way that we're going to fix the bug that we currently have in the code is we're going to go up here to where we say bricks.pop and we're just going to comment that out for now. And then go outside of the for loop and just we're gonna re loop through the bricks. So we're gonna say for brick in bricks. And then for each brick, we're gonna just check to say if brick.visible is equal to false. And then if it is, we are going to that's when we're actually gonna pop it out. So we'll say bricks.pop um, bricks.index of the brick that we're on. And so what this will do is it will prevent the code from trying to check if a ball is colliding with a brick that we already took out of the list and that'll kind of just prevent some some errors so that should fix it so let's see if we can get a new ball oh, I realized something all right so in order for a new ball to show up, we actually have to be calling it in the redraw function. So, so far we just have it to where the ball gets drawn, but instead what we need is 
for every ball in the balls list, it's going to draw it. So now, oh, we missed that. That's not good. All right, spit. <sighs> All right. Another problem that we're encountering is whenever now whenever we click space or we press the space bar, it's broken. In order to fix it, uh, we're gonna have to go right here under ball and say balls dot append the ball. Okay, so once we append this ball to the list, in order to avoid errors, we're just gonna scroll up to the for loop up here and inside of these two if statements at the very end we're just going to say break and so this will prevent um, the continuation of this for loop for that specific brick which will just kind of make the game run smoothly and not cause it to crash so just make sure you have this in there it's very very <laughs> very important and now when we run it we press space we go up hit it Boom, that's working. And now, the multiple ball function is finally working correctly. Alright, so a couple of changes that I want to add to the game are if we scroll down here to the bottom. Mm, let's see, let's see. So whenever we whenever well basically the problem right now is whenever we hit it, it's on the side, it kind of gets stuck on there, right? So in order to fix that, we just have to move the ball up as soon as it hits the paddle so that it doesn't keep thinking it's colliding with it. The way we can do that is by going to going right here. So what we want to do is we still want to keep um, we still want to multiply the y velocity by negative one but we also have to move the ball up to where once it's once it's reversed it won't keep colliding the way we do that is we're just going to say ball dot y is going to equal the player dot y minus um we'll do minus ball dot height minus one so now i believe with that as soon as it collides it'll just teleport back up and we'll avoid having that glitch let's just check that one more time um, okay well i completely missed them but y'all I mean, get the point point. and then another couple things i want to change is just let's i want to make the paddle a little bit bigger so on the initialization up here instead of 100 i want to make it like let's say 140 and we can change the color a bit just to kind of give it some variety so we can go um let's keep that and then we'll make this like a hundred so i'll just kind of be like a just change things up a little bit a nice green color you can obviously mess with the colors and all that kind of have it to where the sizes can be whatever you want the coach should still be working regardless and what are some other things we can do one more fix I want to add to the game is down here. Whenever we press space, um, I'm always adding a ball, but I don't necessarily want to do that. The only time we need to add a ball is if the list of balls is empty. So if the length of balls equals zero, cannot type then we will append a ball and so that will kind of just fix a like a minor bug but it'll kind of help things out yeah i think that kind of wraps things up hopefully you guys enjoyed hopefully your game is working so down in the description i'm going to put a github link that's going to have the resources that i used as well as the code 
so that if you have any bugs and you can't really seem to find where it's coming from, you can either copy and paste the code on over into your file, or you can look for the specific line where something isn't quite matched the way it needs to be. But yeah, I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you guys have any ideas for what tutorials you want to see next, just drop a comment below and I will definitely start working on that as soon as I get a chance.